Morning guys, I'm Siobhan, a third year internal medicine resident. Right now, I'm in South America. I'm in Georgetown, Guyana. And today I'm heading to the Georgetown uh, Public Hospital. And I'm actually gonna be meeting up with internal medicine team. So we're gonna see what internal medicine, a day in the life of a doctor is like here. So I'm super excited for this. Let's get going. So you might be wondering why Georgetown, why Guyana? And there's actually the St. Joe's International Outreach Program and they partner with McMaster, which is how I get involved. I know it said out of bounds, but we've been given permission to come in through here and I've talked to the residents in advance about this. Oh my gosh, I'm already so hot. It's just the morning. But apparently uh, the residents meet upstairs in the resident room, I think. So I'm gonna go and try to find them. Hey, you found us. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, we're just heading over to the recess station uh, practice. Okay, fantastic. Each week, medical students and resident doctors do simulations to practice responding to medical emergencies. We're called by Mitchin's office uh, to review a patient that's vomiting from blood. Our nurse informed me the patient doesn't have a pulse. So I start chest compressions. Uh, can the nurse help me with um, body? I call for my seniors as well. Can I finish up? Can I help? Awesome. You're passing and you've heard. Have another minimal pulse, Chef. All right, you have a flat line on the monitor. Alright, in Sicily, still no pulse. Still no pulse. Alright, please come to the chest compression. It's two minutes since the last pulse. Alright, so we have another random pulse check. We have what seems to be an organized rhythm on the monitor. Is it? Can we call someone else more senior to myself to assist with the possibility for an advanced airway for this patient? Alright, that's it. Thank you guys. Yeah. Alright, so. Great job. Right. Any comments from? Yeah. Always, all really should always be a two person um, technique for that. So, Vikas, you were on call last night? Yeah, I was. Yeah, how was it? It was rough. It was like a tough night, but it's not the worst it's ever been. No, okay. So, how many did you guys actually admit? So, you admitted 17. 17, um, okay. Yeah. That's a busy that's, night. That's a medium night. Medium? Sometimes it gets up to 30. Really? So, yeah. Okay. And then, how many people were on with you? Uh, it was about five of us. On five? Call. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can split it up. Yeah. Wait a minute. So, you're not, you're not going home right now? Oh, no, no, no. We try to sort out our patients what? before. Uh, you, so you have to stay more than 20? Hours? Yeah, probably like 28 to 30. We'll see. Okay, okay, well, hopefully you get home soon. Fun time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I can never complain again after 26 hours. This is clearly, they're doing more than us. <laughs> so I've learned that there are five different internal medicine teams. The one that I'm on has a whole bunch of different medical students and residents at different levels. I'll be sticking with uh, Steve, who's an ICU fellow from the US, and with Vidika, who's a first year internal medicine resident here. So first we're heading to the high dependency unit, so the equivalent of our medical step down unit. Patients who aren't sick enough for the ICU, but still need more nursing care. One of the patients we're seeing is a middle-aged woman admitted with heart failure and pneumonia. In order to find out which bacteria is causing her pneumonia, her sputum was cultured two days ago. But it sounds like we'll have to go down to the microbiology lab to find out the results. So then we can make sure she's on the right antibiotics. I'm amazed to learn that resident doctors don't just order blood work here. They have to go and draw the blood from the patients themselves and then actually walk it down to the lab to be processed. Okay, so now we're heading down to the lab to drop off the morning blood work. And then we're heading to the microbiology lab to check on that patient's sputum culture. You guys do a lot. Like I've just yeah. seen you take <laughs> blood and drop it off and now we're doing the sputum and taking a look at the results. Yeah. And then we're going to radiology, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, a lot to get done yeah. in the day, particularly when you're just 
post post call. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but also great because like you get to know everyone around the hospital. Yeah, yeah. But it's a lot nice. more work for you guys. Yeah, it's nice. We kind of develop a great working relationship with the persons in the laboratory. Yeah. We're more or less friends because on a day to day basis you interact with each other ever so often, all in the aid for better patient care. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we definitely don't do that. I kind of wish that we came down to the lab more and actually saw these things. Well, you um, be going wrong with me a lot. Now I'm going to be doing it today. <laughs> Excellent. <Yeah. laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Whoops, I was just chatting with one of the nurses who actually has what sounds like um, an inflammatory arthritis uh, and I just fell behind from the group. So I'm trying to find the male ward. Um, so I think it's up here, let's see. So after seeing the male ward, you really see that medicine is medicine. I mean, we're talking about the same types of things. What's the sensitivity and the specificity of sputum cultures for TB versus getting a bronchoscopy or should you get a CT scan to assess for cancer? So the same concepts, um, but a couple things are, are quite different. One is that patients are quite sick and they're in these large wards, so about 30 uh, patients in the room. So that's a bit different for me to see. Uh, but I do think it helps that nurses are then able to see all the patients quite easily and keep an eye on them. Um, the other part is certainly discussing the cost of tests and making the decision, bringing in the family um, and seeing what can you do for, for cheapest as well as trying to get the best answers that you can. So it makes medicine actually a heck of a lot more complicated. And I definitely want to ask them more about this uh, throughout the day. So we're heading to the uh, female ward now? No, this is the male surgical ward, but we also have medical patients over on this ward as well. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And I was surprised to see the age of some of the patients. Like for us, we don't see patients who are under 18. Yeah, that's true. So um, here, um, we usually cover from 13 up. 13 so, up? Yeah, pediatrics, the cutoff is 13 here. So okay. Oh, interesting, like, well, different. Some pediatric patients as well. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I'm so impressed with the residents here. They're hardworking, compassionate, they care so much about their patients. Their knowledge base is fantastic and so are their physical exams. Uh, and the level of responsibility that they take on at an early time is, is just wonderful to see. Um, so we've been seeing everything, heart failure, strokes, snake bites, uh, transverse myelitis, even overdoses on substances that I've never really come in contact with before. So I'm learning and having a wonderful time. It's a pleasure to work with them. All of a sudden, everyone rushed down the hall. There was no announcement overhead, but the word spread quickly by phone that there was a code blue medical emergency. And the team jumped into action, just like they practiced this morning. But despite excellent CPR, airway management, and even placing central lines, the young patient had died and they couldn't bring him back. Okay, so um, we just um, came back from a code blue, yeah. and that was a that was a really tough one for me. Yeah, uh, that was that was you? The, like, that was really hard. It wasn't the best code, to be very honest. The team worked so well together. Yeah, I mean, essentially, I think everyone knew what they had to do. Everyone knew their roles. Um, we had a good team leader. We were all really into the resuscitation. Yeah. We were doing everything we were trained to do, but the limitations lie with, you know, calling for something that wasn't there, waiting for something, you know, while we're resuscitating, of course, but, you know, those things weren't there readily available when we needed. I mean, essentially, you would cough up a crash cart and you would think that that would have everything at your disposal, but essentially it doesn't. I'll be very honest, like um, prior to residency, I had my year internship here and then I was a GMO as a year. And um, there was one point whereby I didn't realize how heavily things were weighing on me. Honestly, I just had to take some time off, more or less. Um, even my relatives, they spoke to me and some other colleagues. I took some time off and during that time, like I had some reflection. Then I realized like, this is my role. This is what I can do. This is how I can give my best every day. But I do know that working onwards here in the residency, that essentially the goal is to more or less try to improve on, you know, the way care is being met out to patients, mm -hmm. you know, and 
um, improve on how we're able to better deal with cases and management of patients. Absolutely. I think the residency is, I mean, really great in that regard. And I think with more persons getting training, I, I think that will go a long way. I love hearing how motivated residents are to continue improving the quality of care provided to their patients. So one of the things that I actually want to do is create a code blue team at a hospital here yeah. where I'm hoping uh, to involve all of the specialties. Uh, there will be somebody that's on call from each of the uh, subspecialty where we can have a team that's always ready for a code. Um, I'm actually interested in critical care, so I'm actually uh, scheduled for elective in critical care next January. Is that at, in at, Canada? Yes, at MAC. At MAC? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Great. Okay, so you'll have to definitely let me know when you come into town because I'm happy to show you around and yeah. uh, the ICU is a, a phenomenal rotation. Yeah, I think you'll have a great time. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward for that. Yeah. So we're just heading to the female wards now. And when we arrive, we're always meeting up with um, a junior learner, um, a medical student, uh, to be able, who've already seen the patients. And then Steve or Vidika are um, reviewing their plan, helping to them to, to formulate the plan and then move forward with tests that need to be done. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's it's 2.30 Yeah, but we're finished, so we can probably take a break from lunch. And okay. for us residents, we have another class starting with a GI fellow that's visiting from the US. Oh, cool. So, wow. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. So some more teaching. Yeah. yeah so learning much. and okay. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's go do it. For a moment. Write down, write down whatever all right, so back at the hotel now. What a day, what an experience. I just have so many things flying around my head, so many thoughts and reflections. I have been so impressed by the residents here and the internal medicine program. Their knowledge base, ultrasound, resuscitation, uh, it's remarkable and it's exciting to see. Um, getting to be a part of a code blue and seeing those moments where I think all of us wish that there were other resources that we could tap into and some of the sadness that the residents felt because they've trained, they know what they want to do and, and if they can't do it, that's, that's really disheartening, especially on some young patients. Um, but that being said, there's this air of hope and excitement and drive for the future that is contagious. Um, this idea of being able to go and get information, either study abroad or no matter how you want to do it, to bring it back to Guyana and make the medical education and the medical system stronger. So I loved hearing about their goals and their dreams and I love that that's already happening now. People are already doing fellowships in Canada and coming back and now there's a hematology program. Like there's so much progress that's being made in the last five years. It's extremely exciting. Yeah, so anyway, lots more thoughts moving forward on the plane ride home tomorrow. Um, anyway, so if you guys have comments or thoughts, leave them in the comment box below and otherwise subscribe so that you don't miss any other videos. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.